Hello there, folks. Um, welcome to Pittsburgh Artist Studio for another uh, painting segment. Today we're going to be starting out, we're going to be uh, painting on wood this time. And uh, I want to prep this uh, piece of wood. Uh, I want to kind of get it like um, antiqued a bit. And uh, I think that uh, we're going to have a good time with this. It's uh, a lot of fun. You know, I, I did this uh, not too long. Well, last year I had done two. I actually made one that was a, um, uh, a um, flag. And everyone seems to like that. Well, this one is going to be something uh, patriotic as well. And uh, right now we're going to start out with this. And I guess we want to zoom a little bit so that we can see it if I can find my zoom a zoom a zoom -a. oh there we go there we go you can even see me now <laughs> so I just came in from outside I bought some uh, mulch and boy am I whoo, warm a little bit too warm um so what we're gonna do we're gonna start out I um bought some chalk uh dark it's like a brown um let's see what color it doesn't say on here what it is but i wanted like a brownish background kind of giving it a little bit more texture i also bought this at hobby lobby the reason i like this uh piece of wood it's pretty heavy uh it has a little bit of a hanging uh uh cord on here now the size here, oh golly, um, good question on that. I have to get uh, something to measure this with. Hold on, I'll let you know what that is. Let's see here. Okay, T square here, I'm a large one. It's 19 by 19 perfect square 19 by 19 uh, so if you're buying something I mean you can get any size you want I will have the um, tracing on my site on my uh, PAS traceable site so that we can uh, use that and I am going to get a paper plate for this uh, because I don't want to use my um, my wet canvas so uh, let me go get that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my plate and I have my brown chalk paint. Now, in order for me to do this, I'm going to start out and I'm going to use some daubers. And I raised my seat. Um, uh, one of my um, followers said, I sit way too low. And maybe she's right. I never gave it a thought that I sit so low. Um, I guess I sit kind of low because I don't want to be in the scenes all the time. So I'm just using small uh, daubers. I ran out of daubers last time that I painted. So when I put my black back background on. So I just cut myself with that plastic soap. Dang. So here's my dauber. Okay, I gotta try to open this now. Hopefully it'll open. Not too much trouble. And um, this is a folk art uh, home decorating paint. Uh, I have to get a band aid. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was a dollar ninety nine. Pretty reasonable for this little bit that I'm gonna do. Um, it is a chalk paint. Sometimes I like to use that uh, just for the backgrounds and things. So let's see how this goes on. Yeah, that'll be nice. Okay. Just make sure it's pretty well covered um, with it. You can use a brown stain too. It all depends on what you want to use. And like I said, we're going to make this like red, white, blue, and red. Um, and I may have to go get uh, white. I didn't pick that up today. 
um, not realizing I didn't have any white decorating paint. But I think I can use actually acrylic. It won't hurt it. And you don't want to pile this on too heavy. You just want to make sure that it's on here, uh, that it's staining, and that it's making a nice coverage. Uh, you can get the sides because this is going to go outside, so we're going to actually varnish this as well. Uh, this is something that's going to be outside, hanging. On the porch somewhere. You have to wait till this dries completely before you go and bring in any other colors that any other values to introduce. So I want to make sure this is all completely dry. to be shoving through a bit like a stain like I said so you don't want to put it on too too thick And this, uh, like I said, these things just work so well, these uh, sponge daubers. It, it doesn't ruin your brushes. Um, it just goes on nicely, nice and smooth. You get a nice coverage. And I'm going to put a little bit more out on my palette here, my white so, how's your summer going so far? I mean, I guess it isn't really even summer yet, technically, but it's been pretty warm here in Pittsburgh. It's, uh, today we're supposed to get some rain, of course. just seems like that's what happens here. Get a lot of rain, lots and lots of rain, lots and lots lately. Got that nicely brown. Let me see here. Don't want to get my head in the way. <laughs> so I'm going to stand up over here. See what I need to cover because I need to cover all of this. See, like if I was using a brush, I could just hear what's happening here, and I I know that my brush would be getting ruined. My good brush is. So you don't want to you don't want to ruin that. You don't want to ruin your good brushes. Make sure that everything's covered. Oh, I think my dog is going crazy right now. My little Sally girl, she's like all fired up. All fired up out there. <laughs> She's funny. I take her to Hobby Lobby because you're allowed to bring dogs in to Hobby Lobby. She loves going to the store with me. <laughs> what are you doing, Sally? Here, let me show. Come here, come here, come here. Let's show everybody what you look like. This is my Sally. 
say hi everybody hi and she's my precious dog and uh, she's a Bichon and I adopted her and I think I've told you this several times but uh, she's my best old best friend nobody can be as good as her as far as friendship goes I'll tell you she is the best the absolute best so I'm gonna work on this bottom here get this all covered right here I want to get that all taken care of like I said we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna uh, put some Vaseline on the areas that we don't want to cover with our stains or our other shades we're gonna get that all taken care of and basically this uh, this painting is a very easy one I, I think you'll enjoy doing this because it's not hard it's um, the hardest part here probably will be the writing and it might even be hard for me because I'm not very good at uh, my lettering so let's get that feathered in here because I don't want that to be any different than anything else so sure everything is covered all right so that has to dry so we're gonna let that dry and as soon as it dries we'll be back all right so we have this it's pretty dry so let me get my Vaseline uh, I just got this at the dollar store and we're going to put it on areas that we want that brown to show through. So I'm just using my fingers. Um, definitely want some of it to come through here. definitely on the edges don't be afraid to put this on because what's going to happen this is going to protect the brown it just protects it and um, that's what makes it look antique -y. so when we put our other paint on top of this this will get sanded off and show through that brown will show through through here you know just kind of not as like we have here but we do want some of that to come through here so because we want that other stuff to come off the other paint and you can always use a dauber grab one of these just to get into those crevices there because I really excuse me don't want this stuff here covered so and this might help too kind of cover it better actually it does kind of cover it a little bit better
So you're just going to take your time with this and apply it, uh, taking your time. Make sure you get into the grooves. Making sure you got enough on there so that it does uh, not cover. You don't want that to cover. So make sure you have enough. You can kind of look sideways to see how much you've got on here because um, it'll shine. I mean, you know, Vaseline shines. Okay, so I got that on. And I want to get something to put this on. Let's see. All right, I'll be right back again. Okay, so um, first uh, panel up here is going to be red, and I have this uh, crimson. Um, I can't. I think I bought this at Pack of Tans, or I may have bought it actually at uh, Walmart. Let me shake it up. I have my Dauber paint brush. like some of the came off here Let's see if I, okay so I'm gonna put that on my plate I don't think you're gonna need a lot of this paint in order to cover this um, we'll see here clean dauber so let's go And you're painting right over everything because what's going to happen is that's going to come off anyway so it should we're going to sand it lightly after this I don't want that to go into that so you have to be very careful because you don't want it to drip no dripping in Now this is a chalk crimson. Um, all right. And the other panel, we're going to do this bottom panel too with red. Actually sure if I have sandpaper that might be a real trip if I don't have sandpaper I'll be able to get this done I'll have to check my supplies I used to have sandpaper so hopefully I still have it somewhere my supplies all right now that dauber's done now we're gonna go to our white I have a white satin um, this is Americana. It's a multi-surface satin, so it should go over this pretty well. Oh, did I not? Yeah, I'm recording. I hope I'm recording. That would be terrible. Here I am talking the whole time and not even paying attention to see if I'm recording or not. All right. So we're going to put the white on the, on the plate. 
I want a fresh clean bobber. I don't want to be using the same ones all the time. So that's going to be red, white, and blue. Patriotic. Now, if you feel that you want this to be another um, a, a little bit deeper, you can, by all means, paint again. Uh, I'm going to see how this looks with just the one coat. I don't, I don't want it. I want it to be more antique looking than I do solid. So, I have a different theory in mind on this. So, this is all up to you how you want to do it. Now. My final color here is, uh, I have a nautical color. It's blue. It's a chalk paint. <clears throat> and I've used these before, so I, you know, they're, I know that the colors are just great for this. very well same thing home decor may have gotten us a pack of tans I'm not exactly sure all right so we're gonna paint this one and it's gonna be blue and it's gonna be a little harder to see but because uh, of the black or uh, the brown but I think this is all gonna work out fine we have to wait until this whole thing dries before we can sand it. Then I'm going to put um, some uh, clear gesso on top so we have a nice surface to paint on with our letters and oops. Oh dear. Kind of dripped in there. So, can you see those colors pretty well? That it looks nice. Now, there was a, a person that had written to me it was um, telling me that if you can find palettes, that you can put together your own wood backings. And that's absolutely fine however you want to do it I don't have access to that kind of thing around here so I can't really um, do that I'm gonna put a little bit more white on I really don't want to but I'm just gonna put a little bit more on because this is kind of light so we'll see how this works here if I can get it to sand off correctly be careful that you don't drip I see that I dripped some of my white here then my blue I just want to be able to have some things show up on this so here and dab that off there we go all right very good very good so now we're gonna wait till this dries 
and then we're going to come back and sand off some of that area that we have uh, that you can al already see some of the um, coming through the brown and that's where I put all that Vaseline so we'll be back when this uh, is ready all right so we're back here I have my sandpaper this is uh, 3m it's um, 100 it's 130 in uh, I don't know, you know, um, I always like to use something that's a light, lighter surface. And we're just going to kind of just go over this a little bit, just kind of like where our uh, Vaseline was. Just go over it. Try not to go too deep because you're going to pull off some of the brown. So just kind of go lightly. So you don't get the brown. If you do, you can always go over that a little bit. And like that. It shows through. Like it's distressed. Okay, so we got a lot of red on there. So let's change the side here. Go into the white. I want that red in there. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let me just rip this so I can just use it like this. a little different here this piece I guess because I used the satin it's a little different this doesn't want to come off as easy as the other ones did but that's okay because it wants to, it's got to be weathered looking so this is what we're getting here little weathered look and I think I'm going to get another piece of um, sandpaper here And fold it again. There we go. This piece here is a little different compared to those ones up there because it it's a different uh, texture. As you can see. All right, we're gonna do the blue. Get in between here. I don't want that gasoline being on there either. Same here. Vaseline just helps to pull all that off. It just makes it so nice. Now, if you find that you have a little too much off, you know, you can always go back over that with that brown a little bit just to dab it in. I really like the way this one turned out. This really looks uh, 
weathered. Definitely want your edges. Make sure those edges get taken off. Make sure. Actually, I, I kind of like the way it looks. I mean, even if that is a little bit lighter, it just looks more um, weathered. Kind of makes it look a little bit more weathered. We're going to let this dry completely overnight. I want to make sure that it's all dry before we put our gesso on here to seal it. Because if I put the gesso on and it still has a little bit of wetness, um, it might not it might not take too well. So we'll wait till this dries overnight uh, and we'll finish it up tomorrow. How's that sound? Boy, look at that. It really looks sharp. Red, white, blue, red. That's how you want to do it. If you have a four panel, if you have a three panel, it's just red, white, and blue. So, until uh, we get this for the next time, toodaloo. Have a happy painting. Alrighty, so uh, I've got everything traced on here. Or, you know, um, this is sort of going down, so I have to watch what I do with freedom here but I just wanted to uh, let you know that I decided that I'm not going to um, put the gesso on only because I've already got the paint on and it might lift off I don't really need to have that uh, I just kind of wanted to put it on there for uh, protection but uh, you know what our board is ready I think we can do this without any problem so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to outline the letters, get those done, try to straighten this up a little bit, um, see if I can get that moved up some. And I am going to use a black marking pen. I have uh, several types here. I have the painter's uh, uh, marking pen, and I have this huge deco art one, so we'll, we're going to see where we need to use these. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm just going to kind of like see if I can get this started, too. Some of these may be dried out, I'm not sure. I've had them for a while. Let me try this other one here. This painter's, I think this might work. I can open it. Okay, let's see if this will, yeah, this one's working. All right, so we're just going to outline, try to do it as neat as possible. Shake it up sometimes, you need to. letters now like I said I'll have this uh, also on <coughs> oh excuse me my web page um, so that you'll be able to see it and uh, I'll get this part Oop. now this one comes into here might be kind of drying out also. Okay, I also have, um, I have one of these Molotos. They're pretty good. Let's see if this one will work. 
Oh yeah, this is nice and juicy here. I use these like to sign my paintings usually. So I actually might stand over here because I want to make sure that I'm not in the um, actual, I mean, I'd rather my back be in here than the other part of me here. And we're going to paint this in. Actually, we're going to paint it in. careful when you're doing this. Tap it. There we go. here. Oh, I hate that this happened here. Alright. If you feel that you can do this with a brush, by all means, do that. Um, yeah, I just find that it's easier to do it with a marking pen because it just covers. With a paint pen. But this is such a rough surface that you might want to just try um, using the pen. Uh, I'll be right back. Alright, so I got uh, some other pens here. Uh, that aren't as dried out. Take your time. No need to rush on this. No need at all to rush. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I'll do this one down here.
because I'm putting this on a board and not a canvas, it's a little different, you know. Um, when you trace it on there or whatever. So, okay, so we got faith, family, we're going to have freedom and love. So, let's see if we can get the freedom in here. Okay, this is where I might be in the camera, so I do apologize. I'm going to try to stay as far away from it as I can. get it straight. Sometimes if you outline it, it just makes it easier when you're painting because then you can just paint inside the lines, you know. Unfortunate that this pen doesn't work too well on wood. Let's see if I can get another one. See if I got a sharpie. I don't know if this will work. So I've got this pretty much straightened out a bit, I guess.
just a little bit better since I kind of yucked that up. Okay, all right. Let's see how that looks now. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Love it. Okay, so we got that all put in. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is I want to paint the little um, stars. So we're going to do that. And our stars are going to be like a cobalt blue. Okay, Ugh. got some of that paint on my fingers. Let me put my pens away. Pens are away. Pens are away. All right. Get rid of this paper. <laughs> so, moving right along here. We'll put the blue, uh, cobalt blue in. And I plan on having just a tad of coffee. Ugh. My dog probably is just like... What is she doing? What is she doing? So, that's going to be one of our colors. Um, cobalt blue. Just need to find cobalt blue. Well, let's do cerulean. I think cerulean will work better. Um, cerulean blue basics. Okay, now we're going to have to be very careful with our brushes, so I think the ones that I'm going to use are my, um, well, I'm going to actually use my social artworking brush, number 12, and I'm going to have a sip of coffee. How about that? i got my coffee in here, too. Hope you guys are doing good today. I hope you enjoy this little painting on wood. So I'm going to move this over a little bit so I can reach it. Um, we'll start up here. I think this will show up pretty good on here. I was a little concerned, is it going to show up? But I think we're good. I have to put a couple coats on. We'll have to see. This is a nice little uh, thing to put outside, like I said, because it has a little hanger on it. Um, good for the holidays. Next holiday here coming up is the 4th of July. We just have Memorial Day. Would be nice to have that for those those days also. Okay, nice little. So these are all going to be blue. I'm going to get down here, do this one. It's not hard to paint this. I mean, it's just like going inside the lines. You're not going to have to do anything fancy with these. It's kind of a flat painting. Pretty easy to do. So any beginner could do this painting. just want to make sure I had the um, thing on record. Uh, that wouldn't be too good. Did my doggy leave me? No. My doggy's here with me. I'm going to have to leave her a little bit. I have to go paint windows up at uh, my grandkids' school. Okay, so this is going up into that a little bit into that little crease and that's okay we want to have a little bit of 
something different, you know. Doesn't have to be just all on on this part here. This one's going to go down in here also into the little groove. Now, if you are um, painting on a canvas, you'll have lines instead of those grooves. Yes, you can put this on a canvas. Um, I just chose to do it on the wood because I think it just makes such a difference. And you can put this outside so nicely, hanging it in your, on your porch or, you know, your closed in porch, however you want to do this. So probably another coat will work because you can see too many lines. And I think here too, you know, we want to get it so it stands out. So I'm going to paint another coat on this. And I'm being very quiet because I'm concentrating here. Just to get it into the spots here that we need to get it into. This one shows up much better and it might darken up as it dries and that's okay. If you want to add some white to it, you can surely do that. Oops. But 
all means. Excellent. This one still might need more. A little different paint that I used on that, so it won't grab as well. So I'm going to rinse that out right now, and I'm going to grab some black. <clears throat> Actually, I think I might just grab my uh, gesso and fill that in with gesso, because I think that would work better. Possibly. <clears throat> I love my Bob Ross gesso. Okay, now I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use this uh, Bright. It's a, wow, I don't know what size it is. It's probably a number two or something like that. Bright. So I'm going into my gesso and filling this in. You might want to use a bright only because you have a nice sharp edge. Make sure that crevice is painted. to get let's see here if I have a nice little round brush that I can use let's see maybe I'll use this one here it's just a little this one it's a uh, blender, blender I'm going to use that I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit better here. Ooh, this might not be too good. Let's see what happens here. Is my head in the way? I hope not. Okay, that's better. Just to kind of make the lines a little bit more solid looking. It is so humid. Whew. I have the air on and everything and I'm still perspiring. This is very carefully done. You don't want to work fast on this. You got to take your time. Take your time. That's exactly what this does. It blends.
Once again, I'm drawing, so I am holding my brush close to the bristles. Okay, I'm going to put that in the water, get my blender again, dry it, because I want to go over some of those other lines for this, so it shows up. Same here. Just get these fixed up here. So they're a little bit more solid and show up better. Don't be afraid. Just go slow. Just go slow and it'll work out. Let's see here. We're going to write family. Nice. Get this little star here. Just don't go heavy on the brush. Just go lightly. Lightly. Okay. All righty. Now we're going to fill in our freedom. I'm going to still use this flat uh, or this bristle bright for this I just want to I hope it shows up pretty well I hope my head's not in the way is it I hope not no it's not I'm going to get that little one because I'm going to need it here Getting around in these little crevices here. And these shorter places. These tiny little places. Okay. 
This is looking so good. Yes, it takes time. You just have to take your time with it. <clears throat> Use a nice little small brush blender, whatever you can find in order to get into these smaller areas. Beautiful. So pretty. This word freedom means a lot. We don't ever want to lose it. Sometimes we don't feel that we're free, but we are free. Down to that little thing right there, so it all looks even. my little little brush
<clears throat> and I'll do this last part here, the love part, with my little brush. into some of my blue. Alright, so let's see if we can get that off of there before it dries. Okay, good. Alright, so we got all of our words on. Um, the next thing that we're going to be working on, uh, we're going to get some shadows in here and then we're going to work on our little lines. Now, um, we are going to use raw ombre for this and titanium white. Find my raw umba. There we go. Burnt umber. I don't want that one. I want raw umber. I want umber. Well, we got raw sienna. That's what I need. Raw sienna. Raw sienna. And titanium white. And I'm going to use uh, oh raw sienna. I've just uh, using the Galleria, and then I'm going to use the Deco Art White. And before I do that, I'm going to outline my stars here with um, a mixture of burnt umber. A raw umber. Oh, I gotta get that black out of there. Let's see here if I got that out of there now. Okay, good. So it's gonna be my. I'm putting it on one side of my brush, and then the other side is gonna be the burnt umber. I just want to like um, kind of make a little. And that might actually be too light, but I just wanted to outline these stars here. Kind of so they stand out a little bit more. Maybe I'll just directly go into, because I don't know if I want it that light. It's okay. into that. Just kind of gives it a little glow here. You can use your fingers to clean up if you like. And get a little bit more of the white. It just makes the stars glow a little, brings them out a little bit more. Okay, makes them stand out.
shows where they're at. Okay, I kind of made that a little funny there, so I'm going to just take some blue and kind of push it back in there. All right, I'm going to rinse out my brush. Now, what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to put white on one side and the burnt sand on the other side of our brush. And these little things are going to be ropes, so we're going to make kind of little S shapes here. So we're just going to go like this, all the way down. See how I'm doing that? These are going to be little ropes, little ropes. find that you're starting to run out of paint, grab some more. They're little S shapes. These are little ropes. Okay. And you're going to go all the way down. All the way down with this bit more paint little S shapes shapes little s shapes okay and you're gonna keep working all the way down So uh, we're going to continue with our design here. Uh, I'm going to dip my one side of my brush, and I'm still using that little uh, blender, lunar blender. One side, I'm putting the burnt sienna, and the other side, I am using titanium white, if you can see that. So it's double the paint. And we're just kind of like just making those little ropey things um, just all the way down. We want this to look like rope. We're 
just going to follow it all the way down. Kind of just making like little S formations. Just like as if it was a rope. way down. <clears throat> now as far as varnishing this, uh, we are not going to varnish this for a couple weeks. And you can look back on one of my videos that I've had um, before. It's the flag, uh, American flag, and it shows us how to varnish and you might want to take a good look at that because that's how we would do it. Uh, you're just going to buy a liquid varnish for acrylic paint and uh, just use that example. And I'll have the little eye card up at the top here uh, so that you'll be able to see it. <clears throat> Quite easy. This is easy. It's just a little time consuming, that's all. This part. Just take your time. Take your time with this. Take your time. This is all about taking your time. Am I in the way of this? I don't know. Kind of going over some of the other ones here that are a little bit uh, in need of a fix. Short little strokes. That's all. Short little strokes. I'm going to come over here and uh, work from this side now, um, just so you can see me a little bit better. I don't know if you'll be able, maybe I better stay over here. Maybe I should stay off to this side. Actually, you can make these little S's better from this side here. Just a little S stroke. I just don't want to be in there right in the view of the camera.
So just make sure that on one side you have white and the other side you have the raw sienna or burnt sienna. And your rope can be a little goofy looking too. I mean, it does, you know, ropes are a little funny looking sometimes. They're little bumps and things. Making sure that I got this together here. Different shades. just uh, kind of texturize some of these stars here. I want to get some of those texturized. <clears throat> We're going to put some um, <clears throat> phthalo blue. I want to get some phthalo blue here. I know I have some in my little caddy. Yep, that's not it. Okay. Phthalo blue, so it should be in here somewhere. I use that quite often. Here we go. Oh, it's cobalt turquoise. Close. Like the turquoise. So we're going to put some of that on those stars. Well, maybe not because it's not coming out. Don't go on it. some of our turquoise green from Grumbacher. And I'm using my number 12 uh, brush. Alright, and we're going to go over some of this here. I just decided that I'd rather have, I like this kind of turquoisey shade. I'm going to blend some white into that. Kind of give it a little bit of pizzazz here. kind of like making it a little bit more standout-ish. Slightly blend it. over here. Just blend it in. Just lightly blend. Just blending it. Okay, so we're going to do that with the rest of these stars. Just 
well. It just seems to cover a little bit better than that blue did. Kind of has a little bit more stand out. Just lightly blend. You don't want to over blend it. looks so much better with this uh, shade here. You see it much better. Get some more of that white and blend it here. Our stars won't look as flat looking with a little bit of that light showing through. We only have a couple of more things to do here. And it will be finished. Hopefully I'm not in the way. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to rinse that brush out. Get a little bit more paper towel here. Actually, I'm going to use my little blender brush again. Uh, I want to get a little bit of that right here, uh, the burnt sienna that I used, a little bit of white, just to kind of outline here. Ooh. Make it stand out. Okay, and I did miss a little bit right here. Okay. So, alongside this rope, now I'm going to get my raw umber. That's that really deep brown. And I'm just going to outline. It might not even show up very well, but just going to outline each one of these a little bit. Kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Give it a little bit of pizzazz there.
And you're going to do each one of these like that. Just kind of like give it a little bit of texture here. Now here I added a little too much here, so I'm just going to kind of come back in here with it. Okay. Because all you're doing is outlining. You're not going too heavy with this. To outline, give a little shadow, a little shadow in each one of those little pieces of rope. See how that looks? Kind of helps it to get a little dimensional here. Might even want to put some right alongside this. Just kind of give it a little dimension. Kind of give it a little bit of dimension here. You don't have to press heavy on this. Just kind of shade. You're just shading it a little. Not a lot, just a little. It's almost finished. So I hope you enjoyed this little painting. I think this was a lot of fun. Something different, putting it on a wood piece. Always a lot of fun doing. Any kind of a painting that you do can all be put on wood pieces and it makes it just look really nice. So pretty. Okay, and that's standing out quite nicely. I think I want to put a little bit more of my light one here because you always want to have a little bit of light next to a dark it just helps it to stand up better okay well I think that looks awesome let me see how this looks from far away I always like to look at it. What do you think, guys? Oops, I'd like to have your comments and um, likes. I'd like to see some thumbs up uh, to let me know how you feel about this.